a blessed good day to you. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Greetings on behalf of His Excellency, Reverend Dr. Ferdinand Nichols and all the partners and friends of House of Freedom Ministries here in Barbados. And it is, is always a pleasure to share God's word with you today. Here at the House of Freedom Ministries in Barbados, we are partnering with the Holy Spirit to equip and empower you to be free, to have that life and to have that life more abundantly. And if that's your desire today, then just take a moment right now to, to like, follow, subscribe, either here on Facebook or on YouTube. And let's, let's walk in the way together. Let's walk in that way together. And today we're going to take it even a little step further. Um, and I, 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 I'm excited about this message. I'm excited about what God is saying, what the Holy Spirit is, where the Holy Spirit is leading us. And I am very encouraged um, that it is not only myself that share this particular view in, for such a time as this. You know, and the other day I, I was I was at work. Um, I was in the office and I was walking around and I echoed a statement. And as soon as I echoed this statement, I felt the Holy Spirit say, huh? Uh, but that's what you're supposed to do. You know, and I was like, hmm. And since then, it's just been turning over and turning over in my spirit. And I feel that that is what we have to discuss, what we have to talk about today. And I'm really interested in, in, in communicating to you how the Holy Spirit communicated to me about this particular statement. And I, I'm, I'm, and I, I, I am pretty confident that a lot of you may have heard it before. If not, it's going to be a little fresh for you, but you are going to grasp the concept, grasp the, the, the information and the revelation uh, whether it be fresh for you or it is be a, a confirmation for you, you are going to get it today. So let's, let's just go. And the statement that came out of, out of my mouth in that moment, uh, where I kind of laughed to myself in my head as I was observing something occurring in that space was, fix it, Jesus, fix it. And, you know, you guys can see the tools around me. And, you know, these tools are often used in, in the construction or, or the fixing of things that are broken things that need repair, things that are not functioning the way that they should. Sometimes you might grab a, a, a crowbar, you might grab a spanner, a, a, a ruler, a, 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 some tool to help you repair or to fix or to correct a problem, whether it be a physical problem or even sometimes there is an emotional problem, you might take up one of these tools, which is not the way because that is violence. Um, but we're gonna even touch, about that, touch on that today. So fix it, Jesus. Fix and in that moment when I echoed that statement, when I echoed that sentiment, and and, and with a, 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 a incorrect motive, an incorrect motivation, I must say because I was just, I was just like God, you got like what is this? Like for real? Like you got to do something about this, you know? And I, I know some of us have have done that, you know. Sometimes it's it's become a a, a joke. It can become a, a just a little smile at me we say, but what the Holy Spirit brought to my attention in that moment was that I am supposed to fix it. And I was like, hmm, what? Huh? Let's let's see what this, let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, and there are many times that in, in our workplaces, in our school, in the supermarket, on the road, we are we are communicating, we are are living our life we're doing our work doing what we're supposed to do in those moments and we encounter a situation and we, we we say fix it jesus fix it but what the holy spirit reminded me was that on the cross jesus said it is finished jesus said it is finished the work that he came to accomplish the work that he came and he took responsibility for was finished and we touched upon uh, we touched upon this statement uh, in the series with the wilderness, we touched upon a couple uh, series, a couple series before as well too, and it's been echoed, I believe, since since our Easter message, where we have echoed the sentiments, echoed the statement, echoed the revelation that Jesus said on the cross, "It is finished." He has done the complete work, the complete work of salvation, of deliverance, of healing was completed in that moment. Where Jesus said, it is finished, and then he gave up his life, and then he let go of his breath. Then he surrendered himself, right? 
because he, he wasn't killed. He gave up his life. He laid down his life for me and for you. And it, just for that, it was accomplished. It was accomplished. One of the things he said early in his ministry is that he has come to fulfill the law. So all the requirements of the law were accomplished in that moment. And we can unpack that for quite some time. But I just want us to understand this statement. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. It's not a sentiment. It's not a, a, a motivation. It's not a mindset that we should carry. But let me, now let me explain. Jesus has accomplished. He has already fixed it. He has done his work. He has done his part as it relates to the salvation and the deliverance and the healing of the earth. What is the Great Commission? For us now to fix it. For us to go into the highways and the byways, the workshops, the offices, the supermarkets, the car parks, you know, the, the planes, the roads, the schools, the government offices, wherever we are positioned as kingdom citizens in this world, he has commissioned us to fix it. We now have to take up the responsibility of bringing the reality of his salvation, the reality of his kingdom to other men, that they also may be saved, that they also may become kingdom citizens and also partake in this revelation, in this understanding, in this transformation. As we transform our earth, our home, one individual at a time, one interaction at a time, one relationship at a time. Now, just the other day, I was scrolling through Facebook as I've begun to do a bit more often in these past couple of weeks that I got to really talk the Holy Spirit about that. But I believe in this instance, it was a setup. It was a setup because I came across a post where this individual, he had expressed uh, uh, the, the, this same sentiment in a different way. He talked about being trained to e e equip and e empower uh, the children of God to function in the church. When really and truly, when we look at the scripture, when we look at the early church, the equipping and empowering of people to, to serve God was for them to be able to do that and to do the work of the kingdom in what we term today as the marketplace. That's what I was just describing, the, the airports, the, the schools, the supermarket, the office, uh, the, the construction site, wherever you are, wherever you are, are participating in this social economic climate, wh wherever you're participating in the economy of, of the earth, of, of your country, whether you are at work or you're, you're paying taxes or you're buying something from the market, wherever you are interacting, that is where you are supposed to be equipped and empowered to function. Brothers and sisters, hear me, hear me carefully and hear me clearly. Hear me carefully. And hear me clearly, the work of the kingdom does not this take place in the assembling of the brothers. No, that's the church. That's where we come to celebrate what Christ has done in us as we worship God together. That's where we come and we intercede for each other and we intercede for the world. That's where we gather together and we pray and we fast. That's, that's when we we, we, we come back in our gatherings and we engage in the spirit and war in the spirit so that when we go and engage in the physical, all that we have engaged in the spirit realm can now be manifested as we do the work of the kingdom. As we do the work of the kingdom. You say, Pastor Antonio, uh, uh, help me understand. Like, so what, what, what? Break it down for me, Pastor Antonio. Break it down for me. Okay. So I got to make sure that I, I break it down carefully and, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I communicate only as the spirit will lead me and not just in my excitement because it's very exciting and we can sometimes become emotional about these, these things. And that's one of the things that we need to develop. We need to develop that ability to walk in the spirit. That's one of the things that is key, is vital to being effective in the workplace, in the marketplace, being able to walk in the spirit. So where do you learn the skill? Where do you learn the skills to use the tools before you get on the job? You learn the skills to use the tools before you go on the job. 
every craftsman knows, every, every skillsman knows, the plumber knows, the electrician knows, the construction worker knows, uh, even the tax collector knows that he learns how to do his job before he is on the job. That's the preference. You want to be able to learn and hone on your skill before you go out there. So that is what's happening. That's what needs to be happening in when we come and we gather together. When we have our prayer meetings and our Bible studies and our, our gatherings of two and three, where the Holy Spirit comes and he is in the midst of us, that's where our iron needs to be sharpening iron. That's where we need to be growing and learning to walk in the spirit, learning to walk in the spirit. Jesus said it is finished. And because it was finished, he was able to leave this earth and send another. He was able to leave this earth and send someone with another task, someone who fulfilled another purpose, someone who came and he, he has partnered with us, enabling us now to fulfill the great commission. Jesus said, I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit so you can receive power. Power to do what? Power to fix it. Power to do the work. You have to wait. You have to gather together. You have to become one. You have to be in one accord. And in that room, you have to work out those things so that you could become one and receive that power. And once you receive that power, once that power has come like a rushing wind and like tongues of fire on your head, you are now enabled to step out of that room into the marketplace into the gathering of traders, into the gathering of people buying and selling, into the gathering of people traveling and transporting, you're able to burst out into that area and see salvation and see deliverance take place in that moment. But only, only with the power, only under the, the, the gifting and the guidance and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So that's where it begins, brothers and sisters. It begins with submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. Submitting yourselves to the Holy Spirit. And he, the scripture says that he will come and he will, Jesus said he will come and he will remind you, he will teach you or tell you of what I have said. So he's going to show you and remind you of what I have done because Jesus executed the task. Jesus did this. Jesus went into the highways and byways, into the the tax collector's home. He, he went to the, to, the, to the wedding. Wherever he was, he was doing good. There's a song that I can remember. I'm not going to sing it this morning, but it said, everywhere he went, he was doing good. And I can hear it in my mind right now. Uh, I'm trying not to sing it because this is not the time or place, but everywhere Jesus went, he was doing the work of the kingdom. Blind eyes were open. Deaf ears were open. Limbs were healed. Salvation was 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 present. The kingdom of God was at hand. That's what he declared. He was challenging and transforming those around him. He was ushering in this transformation. That's what he was doing. So the Holy Spirit points us back to Jesus for us to know what to do, for us to know how to function, for us to know how to answer the questions when they're asked. For us to know how healing is supposed to work. For us to know how deliverance is supposed to work. We see Jesus. We see Jesus coming away from the disciples, setting himself apart from the disciples at key moments, at key junctures, right? Where he would even send them on ahead and say, okay, you go, you take the boat and you go on ahead and I will meet you. And then he comes walking in the water. We see him, see him going off to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane before that, that great, great scene where they come to arrest him. We see Jesus develop a habit of gathering together with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and then engaging mankind after. And that's the same principle, the same practice that we ought to do today. When we gather together as brothers and sisters, when we gather for Bible study, for prayer meeting, for intercession, that's what we are doing. That's where we are engaging in the Holy Spirit, partnering with the Holy Spirit for us to, to learn how to use the tools for him to educate us and have us trained 
with the tools so that when we engage the people, we can be effective in our ministry. Effective when it comes to healing, when it comes to deliverance, when it comes to salvation. That's what we ought to do. Yes, in the privacy of your home, you do it as well. You and Holy Spirit alone, yes. If you're a husband or your wife, you and you guys gather together, yes. And then in the assembly of the brethren, yes. In that intimacy between you and the brothers of Christ and Jesus and his presence, yes, there is the, the growth in the spirit happening. We, we, we are learning together. We're studying together. We are practicing the work together. Plumbers, electricians, carpenters, they all learn their skills together. Of how does an apprentice become the master? He goes and he works alongside the master. He is not the primary workman, but he goes and he observes. And as he learns to do the small things, after being taught in that moment, that he continues to work. So there is, a, a, there is a, a, an apprenticeship that happens as well. But there's a school. And there's an apprenticeship. So as we do this, we grow into that workman, that effective fisher of men. That's a term Jesus used. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The task, one of the tasks that Jesus was accomplishing that he had finished, that he completed before he gave them the great commission and he told them to wait for the power was what? He was teaching them to be fishers of men. He wasn't teaching them how to be fishing rods or how to be bait. They were the fishermen. They had to take the tool to get the job done. They were being trained how to use the tools to get the job done. The same way they were out there using the tools, learning to use the tools to become fishermen, the same way they were learning to do that, Jesus said, hey, come, let me teach you a different skill. Let me teach you a different trade. Let me educate you and elevate you for a different work. You will no longer be fisher, fishers of fish, <laughs> fishermen of fish, but you will be fishers of men. <laughs> you will become fishers of men. So he, he, he educated them and he taught them how to do this. Now, Paul comes along in the New Testament and he is transformed and he unpacks this revelation, this understanding in, in such a marvelous way, in such a marvelous way. And he, he begins to draw the lines of the structure and, and the formalities so that we can understand and imagine and chart our path towards becoming fishers of men. One of the things that we find in the New Testament are these tools. What are these tools, Pastor? What are these tools? What are these tools that you're referring to? What is the hammer and the saw and the pliers? What are these tools? The gifts of the Spirit. So the gifts of the Spirit are the tools used not just in the gathering, but these are the gifts that need to be used in the marketplace. When did Jesus exercise the gifts of healing? When did he exercise the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of prophecy, the word of knowledge? When did he exercise these gifts? He exercised these gifts, not just in the gathering of him and the disciples where he was training them, but also in the public eye also in the public eye. And he demonstrated the gifts then of miracles. The first miracle we talked about this not too long ago, where he turned that water into wine. That was a public display. That was at a wedding. It was noticed. It was noticed. At least the servants who took the jars and filled them with water, at least they would have noticed what happened? It might have been a small public gathering, but it was, it was a public gathering nonetheless. So the next time you go to a wedding, I challenge you to display the gifts of the Spirit. That's what Jesus did. Aren't we supposed to be 
living in that way, living in the way like how Jesus demonstrated, isn't that what the Holy Spirit task is to enable us to walk in the spirit to enable us and to teach us and to remind us of what jesus said and what jesus did the gifts of the spirit now what do these produce or or, or, or what helps or what comes alongside the gifts of the spirit the fruit of the spirit so now the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit are not the same thing, but they work in tandem. They work side by side to produce fruit that remains, to produce uh, seeds that, that bring forth more fruit, to, to provide the needs, to meet the needs of the people that then produce seeds in the people that bring forth more fruit. I find it very awesome that Paul would use the term fruits of the spirit. Because what is a fruit? A fruit is something that you get, that you take, that, that you, you receive, and it provides nourishment. It provides certain vitamins and certain, certain essential things to your body to sustain you. Certain things that you may lack are in the fruit. They're in the fruit. And it, 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 it causes your body to react and to respond in a different way. Well, it's also in the fruit is the seed, the potential for reproduction, the protection, the potential for duplication, the potential for giving birth to more like its own. To produce like after its kind. So when you, 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 you flow in the spirit and you are exercising the gifts of the spirit alongside and in tandem with the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, understanding. When you are walking in the spirit, you are walking this way where you are exercising the gifts of the spirit motivated by the fruit of the spirit by that love and you have met the need of the person to your left and to your right the person that is the customer the person that is the the employee the person that is the employer because this is happening in the marketplace the person driving the bus the person that you're driving in the bus when you are walking in the spirit and you are doing the work and you are doing the work then you have not just met the need of the individuals there as the holy spirit will guide you as the holy spirit will, will enable you to but you've also planted a seed that has the potential to to reproduce to go into the heart of that individual and cause a transformation within the soil of their being to take root at, at the source of who they are and produce the same type of fruit. It, it, it's because that seed gets down and it displaces what is there. It, 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 it takes out things that don't belong and it transforms them into things that are healthy, that are good. That is how the Holy Spirit wants to work in you and in me. So my task, my task today is to have you to understand and to have us to understand that this is the journey that we are on. This is the journey that we're on as believers together. We're, we're journeying with the Spirit as he schools us, as he takes us into apprenticeship, as he makes us workmen, partnering with the Holy Spirit, partnering with Christ to accomplish the work of the kingdom. Where? Not at the assembling of the brethren. Where? In the workplace, in the highways and byways. Jesus came to make us fishers of men. And then Paul breaks it down even further. The, 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 in the New Testament, it's broken down even clearer. You know, 
and sometimes we, we, we struggle and we don't understand when we talk about the apostles and the prophets and the teachers and the evangelists and the pastors. And, and we get all caught up in, in, in all types of imagined things when it's very clear that these were given for the edification of the body. Who is the body? The believers. The believers. So we are all workmen. When we're not, when we're, when we're not gathered together, we're all workmen, all equally assigned to the task of bringing about the kingdom of God. All equally assigned to the task of bringing about the kingdom of God. The, 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 the terms of the apostles and prophets, and those terms are, are applicable within the church. Within the church, and, and I want you to clearly understand what I'm saying. Within the church, those are leadership, those are acknowledgments of, of, of leadership within the church. Those are acknowledgments of, of leadership and experience and authority and of, of bearing fruit within the church when you begin to bear fruit and you become a leader and, and you know you are you are able to be effective in terms of producing the kingdom in, around you first in your household first in your household that's one of the requirements of the new testament of any elder you have your household has to be correct and from there you know wherever you engage you should be engaging in the spirit and as you engage in the spirit and you grow in, in, in the spirit and you become a more effective workman, then the Holy Spirit elevates you. The Holy Spirit elevates you into some position of leadership. And that is great. That is fine. And that is effective. But let us not get the perspective that the work of salvation, the work of the kingdom is only for the apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. That's not what it says in scripture. That's not what it says in scripture. And I can hear you say, oh, so pastor, like show us the scripture, show us the scripture. I'm not gonna show you the scripture today. You wanna know why I'm not gonna show you the scripture today? Because you have a responsibility to yourself to be studying the scripture. To be studying the scripture. It's not to say that I'm not going to show it in my next message. It's not to say that we're not going to go back and reference it verse, chapter, book in our next message. But today, I want, I want to connect with you. I want you to understand. I want you to hear my heart. I want you to clearly understand and hear my heart. The responsibility of doing the work of the kingdom is ours, ours, ours. Yes, when we gather together, when you call for prayer amongst each other, yes, we do that. Yes, that is where we hone our skills. That is where we, we grow in, in our faith, praying for each other and seeing it come to pass. When you call me and I pray for you and you get healing, that is awesome. That is great. That is how it's supposed to be. But when you're at school, when you're at work, don't call me to pray for the person that's there. You do it. Don't call me to pray for your colleague. You do it. You need to do it. The same Holy Spirit that works with me wants to work with you. But pastor, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Okay, we, we'll work on that. We'll get you there. But I just want you to understand where we're going. I want you to understand where we are going. As I am growing, as I am learning, yes, I too reach out to, per to brothers and sisters around me to partner with me and the Holy Spirit as we pray. But not every single time. There are times I have to say, hey, 
it's me god is asking me he's putting me here i don't have the time to pick up the phone and call pastor brother sister intercessor i don't have the time i have to do it right here right now this person needs something right here right now what are you going to do you got to speak the word you got to declare healing you got to let that gift of prophecy that gift of healing that gift of wisdom that word of knowledge that that gift that, that fruit work in you right then right there jesus has come to the earth he has walked and being a living example he has gone to the cross and paid the price for you to accomplish what it is he's asking you to do for you to accomplish what he's asking you to do, he's already done the work. Nowhere in scripture do I see Jesus praying for hours doing deliverance. Every example of deliverance is a short conversation, a short interaction, and a word. Go, go, go. Why is that? Because he's already put in the work. He's already spent time that morning, last week, engaging in the spirit, engaging in spiritual warfare to deal with whatever he is going to encounter that day. He is not unprepared. He is trained and skilled to use the tools that God has given him. God gave him tools. We saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove on him as he was baptized by John the Baptist. And never said the Holy Spirit left. <laughs> he, he too was walking in the Spirit. He echoed and he said, I do as I see my father do. I say as I hear my father say. If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I'm doing exactly what he's asking me to do. I'm not doing anything else. Anything more, anything less. So if you want to see the Father, look here. I'm him. <laughs> he's me. Can, can we say that? Are we doing exactly what the Holy Spirit is asking us to do? Are we praying when the Holy Spirit is asking us, pray now? Lay your hands on that, on that, on that, that broken hand, on that, that, that sickness. Lay your hands on, on that person and pray for healing for them now. But pastor, I'm going to make sure that they know Christ. I'm going to make sure that they do this, that they do that. Let the Holy Spirit say to you to pray, pray. Don't let the enemy trick you. Learn the voice of the Spirit. Learn the voice of the Spirit and just be obedient. But what if it doesn't work? It's the Holy Spirit. You can't go wrong. You've not been disobedient. Believe. Learn to believe. Grow in your belief. Grow in your belief. Pastor Sheen taught us a, a couple Wednesdays ago, you know, you have to get past that, that fear. Get, pa get past that, that fear that you go and you do the work and it doesn't work, and you look like a fool. We all have to grow past that. We all have to go and do what it is we are trained to do. Do what it is we are trained to do, and expect believing that it will accomplish that which it is set out to do. And the Holy Spirit and the Word of God says very clearly that he looks after his word. He looks after it to make sure that it accomplishes that which it is sent out to do. All you have to do is act on it, believing. Act on it, believing. Faith and works. Act on it, believing. Act on it, believing. Brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you today. Encourage you today. 
to do away with the concept that you can walk away from that situation and somehow Jesus will just fix it. You pray, yes. But if at that moment God is asking you to do something, if the Holy Spirit is asking you to open your mouth and say something, to reach out your hand and pray something, to, to dig into your pockets and provide something, do it. Ask the Holy Spirit, how can I partner with you to fix it? Let me fix it with you. I want, I, this needs fixing. Jesus, help me fix it. Holy Spirit, help me fix it. If you can see it, you can touch it. If you can see it, you can touch it. Because there's no distance in prayer. <laughs> there's no distance in, in a word released from your mouth. It could be happening across the pond. It could be happening across the river, across the sea, across the Atlantic. And the Holy Spirit brings it your, to, your, to your attention. Okay, Holy Spirit, how can, I, like, how can I fix this? How can I partner with you to help this person in this need? I remember there was a time I engaged my wife on, on her, her, her choice of, of TV shows. You know, she was watching this, this reality TV show. And she, 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 you know, she still lives every now and again. And one of the things that she echoed me, echoed to me, that she said to me, hey, hold up, hold up. I, I just felt like if I, you know, could pray for this individual that she's watching on the television. She couldn't necessarily show her hand and touch them or say a word that they can necessarily hear. But she could pray from a distance, seeing what she's seeing on the screen and touch that and impact that individual. Why not? Why not? I've heard, I've heard at least one story of, of uh, uh, someone else on TV whose life was saved because a medical practitioner, I believe it was a, a, a nurse, I believe it was a nurse, saw them on TV and diagnosed a medical condition that they had, reached out to them Somehow, I don't know, it was via email or mail or calling the, the, the TV station, reached out to them and told them, you need to get checked for this. They went and get checked for that. And they had it. Let's not put anything, anything past what the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit can do the work. You just have to partner with him. You partner with the Holy Spirit. You become the Holy Spirit's apprentice. You become the Holy Spirit's apprentice and just follow the instruction. Tap here. Okay, tap here. Okay, screw here. All right, screw here. All right, cut here. All right, cut here. Uh, you learn to exercise the tools that he has placed in your head. As you learn to to use the small hammer, you get to use the big hammer. As you are faithful with little, you are given more. I, I used to work in, in, in landscaping. I used to work in landscaping, and that's the process I went through. When I first came on to the job, I was given the easiest tools to use, gloves. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the garden, man, just pulling out the weed. I had to learn what was the weed from what wasn't a weed, what was the weed from what was a young plant. I had to learn that. And you know, who was teaching me, the, the workman, the skilled workman came alongside me and said, all right, this is a weed. This is not. This is weed. This is definitely weed. This is a vine. Hold that. And, and, and she taught me that. Eventually, as, as time progressed, as time progressed, we would go back to the job and she'd be like, okay, you work on it. I'm going to go over here and do something. You work on it. And I will work on it. But then when I saw something I didn't recognize, I'd be like, uh, what's this? And she'd be like, that's what that is. Don't pull that, pull that. And I, and I learned and I grew and I became a skilled workman. I elevated from that. And then, she, you know, they gave me the lawnmower the lawnmower. 
I, I mean, I used a lawnmower growing up as a kid. So I was like, I could use it. No, I had to go through the process. So they gave me the lawnmower, taught me how to use it, taught me the levels they want to set it at. At this job is at a two. At this job is at a three. At this job is at a four. Think about the height of the lawnmower now. Right? At this job, you push it all to one side. At this job, you're going to spit it and push some to that side and some to the other side. They taught me the, the skills necessary. And, you know, say, Pat, say Antonio, I think it's just Antonio, just overlap it here. Uh, let's overlap your line here with the wheel, overlap here, overlap here. And they taught me this, how to use the lawnmower skillfully. And I was like, good. So then a couple of jobs later, he said, like, okay, all right, now you go and you do it. And then eventually I got one of those, those, those bad boys, one of those weed backers. And, you know, I was taught, I, I meant to, it was an easy job. I was taught how to use the weed backer slowly. And it took me... <laughs> It took me so long to, to, to cut a certain area of, of, of the lawn that took them like five minutes. That went over like 20, you know, <laughs> right? But eventually I got the swung of it. I got the hang of it. I learned how to use it. So to eventually they will take me to a job, put the lawnmower there, put the weed backer there, leave the tools there and say they're coming back. And they would leave me there on the job to do the work because I had grown into a place where I could now do the work. So as you walk with us, as you partner with us, as you listen to me and as we grow together, understand that eventually, eventually we are gonna transition you from just being in the school into apprenticeship, into a position where you can do the work. All of us have to get into that position where we can do the work. And guess what? There came a time where they brought on another employee. And then I had to teach that employee. I now was elevated now to a position of leadership where I now was given the opportunity to take that person through the process that I was taken through. And then I will take that person, another person, another person on, you know, and I will be on, we will be on the job. We will be on the job. And then I will be the one leading the team, the team of two or three of us on the job. That, that is the work. That is where we are going. That is how we are growing. So get ready, brothers and sisters. Get ready, brothers and sisters. Ready yourself, count the cost. Ready yourself. We're going to sweat doing this work as I'm sweating now today. It's hot in here today. <laughs> but God is good. God is good. Because we are going to partner together. We are partners together with the Holy Spirit. Here gathered today. And we are understanding that is in, in this gathering, in this, in this interaction, that we are learning to do the work. When we come together for Bible life group, when we come together for our intercessory prayer sessions, when we come together uh, uh, in person, as, we're go as, as we do, for those, for those of you here in Barbados, as we do, when we gather together, we, is it, is within that gathering, that assembly of us, we, we celebrate what God has done in our lives, yes. We worship God together, yes. And we also allow the skills and the gifts of the spirit to be honed, to be taught, to be matured in that space. So when you're called up to pray for that person who needs prayer, don't hesitate, come, let's do it together. Come, let's do it together. Let's, let's do this together. We are doing the work of the kingdom. I don't want you to back down. Don't back down. I heard a number of beautiful testimonies 
uh, as well as recent as, as Wednesday of someone who was doing the work of the kingdom. You know, I'm not going to call them up by name, but they're, they were in, in this school and they were doing the work of the kingdom and saw great success, great success. Saw some lives transformed. Some lives transformed in the time that, that they were able to spend with these, with these students to the point where even though that time came to an end, when they interacted with them again, something after, the, the results were still there. The results of the, the, the work of the kingdom that that individual did in that marketplace, at that school, with those individuals, was still evident. They produce fruit and fruit that remain. And it challenged not just the, the, in the students to change and to grow, but it also challenged the others in the space. The other persons working at the school were challenged from what they saw. Again, that fruit that she, that, that she bore at the school produced seeds, not just in the individuals that she touched as students, but the others that were there at the school started to say, hey, how do you get this done? How did you get those children to do this? Oh my goodness, like, huh? How did you do it? And that has to be our testimony. That has to be what they say when they look at us. When they look at us in the supermarket, when they look at us on the road, when they look at us in the school, when they look at us in, in the office, in, in, on the construction site, when, they, when we're doing last game, they have to be able to look at us and see that the work that we are doing is so effective in transforming the area of our influence that they ask us how and we exult and say, Jesus, Holy Spirit has enabled me to accomplish this. Holy Spirit has enabled me. God has done the work and he has enabled me to lay my hands on you and see you healed. He's enabled me to, to, to look into your situation and have a word of knowledge and to prophesy and to speak encouragement to you. He has enabled me to, to feed you. He has enabled me to clothe you. He has enabled me to provide this service or this product to you. That's our testimony. And that then causes them to say, hey, I want to be able to do this. I want this. I, and all right, then and there, you introduce them to the Holy Spirit. You introduce them to Jesus. And that relationship springs forth. And guess what? You bring them into the gathering. You bring them into the gathering and they come into the gathering now and they grow and they learn with you. Because now you have taken a position of leadership. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you today to take up Take up the tools that Holy Spirit is presenting to you and engage the work that you have been commissioned to do. I want to encourage you to journey with us and, and, and let your relationship with Holy Spirit, with Jesus and God, the Father, transform you into who you were born to be. Not a slave to sin, but a citizen of the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, as, as we wrap up, it's been such a, a joy and a privilege to share the word of God with you today. And I want to thank you once again for spending this time with us here at House of Freedom Ministries in Barbados. And I want to remind you to connect with us via your comments in the chat, either on Facebook or YouTube. You can also message us on the Facebook page or even send us an, an email via our email address, which is hofbdos1997 at gmail.com. Again, that's hofbdos1997 at gmail.com. I want to thank you again for liking, sharing, following, and subscribing by clicking below. And I'm already excited about sharing with you again next time. God bless you. 
Bye-bye.